If I've come to understand anything in my years of writing game reviews, it's that the indie market is very, very interesting. If you're strapped for cash, no problem. You can find enjoyment on Steam, Game Jolt, or IndieDB for absolutely nothing. If you're willing and able to shell out a few bucks, once again, Steam has your back, as well as the PlayStation Network or Xbox Marketplace if you're on consoles. Welcome to Indie Impact, a series where I'll be looking at an assortment of indie titles that can be found on one of the aforementioned platforms, discussing their pros, cons, and letting you know if it's an impact or if it's a letdown. Without further ado, here are today's Indie Impact titles. I'll be completely honest, North is a game that surprised and infuriated me. Surprised because the horror aesthetic kept me on the edge of my seat, wondering where the story would take me by the end, and furiated because the lack of any real direction had me believing the game was broken until I figured out the well-kept secrets. North puts you in the shoes of a nameless immigrant who survived the journey through an unforgiving desert and has arrived in the big city, but things aren't quite as he'd imagined. It's a relatively short experience meant to be played from start to finish in one sitting and will only take about an hour or so if you don't run into any of the roadblocks as I did. It's a first person experience which helps to immerse the audience in this eerie tale of confusion and fright. I never quite managed to shake this feeling of dread as I played. It kinda got me thinking about its meta commentary on the immigration crisis facing many countries around the globe. In terms of its pros, it's not an incredibly long game, so it's an easy title to jump into that won't take up too much of your time. It's appropriately creepy, but doesn't really provide any significant horror, rather it relies on anxiety and suspense to drive the point home. It's a meta-narrative that keeps you thinking about the implications long after you finish playing. In terms of its cons, it feels more like a demo at times than a full release, and as such, you may feel like there was a lot left unanswered. It leaves a lot up to the player to figure out without many clues, which may leave you unable to progress past a certain roadblock or two. It's very blocky, unpolished, and maybe even a little uninspired. North is developed by Outlands and is currently available via Steam for $1.99, which is more than reasonable for a game like this. If you'd like to play it on console, it's available on the PlayStation 4 for $2.99, the Xbox One for $4.99, and the Nintendo Switch for $2.99. North is published by Sometimes You, who also provided me with a code for the PlayStation 4 version. I feel like North is definitely an impact. It's a simple experience that may have flaws, but I don't regret my time with it, and I don't think you will either. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect when jumping into Energy Invasion, but it somehow managed to defy any expectation I would have had. I'm still not sure if that's a good thing. Energy Invasion is, at its core, a remaster of the classic arcade slash mobile phone slash browser game you play when you're too bored to even breathe, Breakout, or Brick Breaker. It does sport some new features that make it relatively unique, however. The main mode, dubbed Invasion Mode, takes you through 25 levels of incredibly challenging setups, the only solace being the game's contagious soundtrack. Linear Mode is a secondary option that offers 25 new levels more reminiscent of the game it's seemingly inspired by. Endless Mode seems to offer even more levels, but I didn't notice a difference between it and the other modes, besides the fact that it does seem to be endless. I haven't completed any of the modes as of writing this, but credit where credit is due, the game is addicting. I was surprised at how much I WANTED to beat a game that's basically Breakout 2018. In terms of its pros, it's not fair to disregard it as merely a Breakout clone. It does bring its own style and flair to separate it from what came before. It's got a killer soundtrack filled with techno EDM tracks that'll keep you dancing even when you've got the game paused. It's visually impressive, it's clear a lot of effort went into the graphics department and it pays off in the finished product. In terms of its cons, it might not be fair to disregard it as merely a breakout clone, but at the end of the day, that's what it is. There's not much else to it than that. 
In terms of its presentation, it failed to tell me what the game was until I started it, at which point I was simultaneously surprised and let down. Energy Invasion is both developed and published by Sometimes You, who offered me a code for the console version. It's available via Steam, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation Vita for $2.99. I'm calling Energy Invasion a letdown, with the qualification that I think there's definitely an audience for a game like this, but I don't think I'm included. It's addicting, sure, and it's visually and audibly impressive, but it honestly feels like it should be cheaper or even free, despite the amount of content available. I think it's safe to say, based on my limited experience with roguelikes, that I really don't like roguelikes. I'm sure it has a lot to do with my lack of skill, but regardless, I can't bring myself to like the idea of playing for a relatively long time, only to lose all of my progress as soon as I make one wrong move and die horribly. In the case of Neverend, I can't say it's changed my mind. In fact, it's only reinforced my hatred. In Neverend, you're put into the shoes of an unnamed protagonist with the most basic of equipment, a stick, and your job is to comb through a dungeon of seemingly unlimited and randomized rooms, defeating monsters and, I imagine, upgrading your equipment and items. I say imagine here because I've only managed to upgrade my stick once every other time I end up getting trapped in a room with a mini-boss and I end up dying horribly. In terms of its pros, it's very addicting and, dare I say, fun? I'm always cursing it out and saying how I'll never play it again, but I always end up picking it back up. It's got a seemingly unending amount of content to sift through if you're okay with dying because you will. A lot. It's got a simplistic, blocky style, but there's a complexity to killing enemies and navigating through the dungeon. It's easy to go in stick swinging, but sometimes you need to evade and attack if the enemies are following you. In terms of its cons, it's very addicting, and dare I say... <sighs> Screw this game! It really doesn't bother to explain anything about how the game works. Patience is definitely a virtue here because a big part of the experience is trial and error. Ah, screw this game! I know, I know, I know! I can feel the salt flowing through my veins right this second, but with never end, I just can't stop myself. It's a ridiculously challenging game that has me raging each and every time I play, yet I just can't seem to give it up! Never End is developed by Duck, and published, once again, by Sometimes You, who offered me a review code for the PS4 version. It's available via Steam for $1.99, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation Vita for $2.99. I'm gonna say that, at its price, and considering how addicting and reluctantly fun it is, Never End is an impact, and I would recommend it to anyone who either loves roguelikes or hates life. If you've made it to this point in the video, I want to thank you so much and invite you to click that subscribe button if you'd like to see more from this channel, and be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified every time I post new content, as if the subscribe button wasn't enough, YouTube! If you'd like to join my Discord server, you'll find a link to do so in the description below, as well as a link to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel financially. If not, then I look forward to seeing you around the internet. I'm Pixelation, as always, reminding you to stay pixelated.